So in addition to scalar line integrals, line integrals in R2 and R3 may also have integrands involving vector fields. So here we begin our exploration of line integrals of vector fields. And there's two major differences between scalar line integrals and vector line integrals. So with vector line integrals, they must be evaluated over an oriented curve. And the value of that line integral is going to depend on the curve's orientation. So when we say oriented curve, we simply mean that the direction of this parameterized curve is specified. The, the other major difference of the line integral of a vector field is the obvious. It contains a vector field. And this vector field along the smooth oriented curve involves a specific component relative to that curve. So looking at this graphically, again, we begin this by defining C as a smooth oriented parameterized curve in R3 that's parameterized by the arc length. And we let vector F be the vector field continuous on a region containing this curve C. So we have a arbitrary illustration here of what something might, like this may look like. So we want to make a note that at each point on C, the unit tangent vector points in the direction, or points in the positive direction of C, the positive orientation of our curve. So the component form of the vector field in the direction of the tangent vector at the point on C is defined by the magnitude of that vector field multiplied by cosine of theta such that theta is the angle between these two vectors. So the angle between the, tan the unit tangent vector and our vector field capital F. So since we have that t as a unit vector, and by the definition of the dot product, we can convert the component form of this vector field to the following. So we are taking the component form, the magnitude of the vector field, multiplied by cosine of theta. And since we know that vector t is a unit tangent vector, we can simply rewrite this as the magnitude of the vector field multiplied by the magnitude of the unit tangent vector multiplied by cosine of theta, right? because the magnitude of the unit tangent vector is just 1. And by the definition of the dot product, we see that this is equivalent to simply the dot product of the vector field and the unit tangent vector. So we integrate, or we're going to integrate, over this dot product of the vector field and the unit tangent vector along C. And what this adds up to is that, in effect, we're adding up the components of the vector field F in the direction of our curve C at each point. So let's go ahead now and look at our formal definition. So a formal definition for the line integral of a vector field. To begin, we let capital vector F be a vector field that is continuous over a region containing a smooth oriented curve C parameterized by the arc length S. We want to let capital T, capital vector T, be the unit tangent vector at each point of our curve C consistent with the orientation of the curve. Then the line integral of the vector field F is over C is defined as the integral over C of the dot product of the vector field and the unit tangent vector with respect to arc length. So just like with scalar line integrals, we're going to need to establish a method for evaluating vector line integrals with respect to an arbitrary parameter, not just arc length.